So this car's got a 171 code that I may have actually already fixed it. But while I'm here, I just want to check everything else. I wanted to check the fuel pressure. I also want to pulse the injectors and see what each injector uh, reads at. And what I'm going to use for that is I've got a tool right here. Hold on a minute. Let me get it out. I've had this thing for years. I can't remember the last time I've used it. And uh, this is a fuel pressure, uh, fuel injector tester. And what it does is it just pulses the injectors at an exact pulse rate. You got three settings. Um, they all equal 500 milliseconds, but you got one pulse at 500 milliseconds, that's half a second, 50 pulses at 10 milliseconds each, and 100 pulses at 5 milliseconds. So, um, whenever you hit that button, you're going to hear those injectors pulse, and uh, you'll have pressure. What, what I'll do, now on this particular car, I'm going to have to activate the uh, fuel pump, either by... Uh, Normally, you just turn the key on, the fuel pump will kick on, and then whenever it senses no crank, it'll shut off, and you'll let it stabilize at whatever the fuel pressure is going to be. And this car's got all kinds of wiring problems. It's got relays bypassed out of the relay box here for the fans. Obviously, now we're seeing that the uh, fuel pump doesn't even come on whenever you go to the run position. Um, you got to go to the start position as it's cranking and, and while it's running the fuel pump will be on and I've got to check on that and see what's going on there so what I'm probably going to do is use the scan tool to activate the fuel pump to build the pressure up uh, then once it stabilizes then I'll pulse the injectors with the tool this particular make and model does not have the option on my scan tool to actually do a fuel injection a fuel injector pulse or a fuel injector test and what that does is whenever you're pulsing the injectors each injector should have a pretty much an exact amount of pressure drop in that 500 millisecond pulse so that's what we're going to do um, so let me get let me figure out I'm gonna, just like that. there we go Okay, so let me let me get these injectors disconnected. Okay, so I got the tester, the, the fuel press, the fuel injector tester hooked up. Got the fuel gauge. Now, this uh, tester comes with a Moltec style uh, connector and then it's got these two jumper wires. If you're, whatever injector you're testing, if it doesn't have this type of connector, this Moltec style, then you put, put these jumpers in there and then you just manually put these on the, uh, on the pins of the injector. So let me do that. Sorry for the fan, but it's, it, it runs when the key's on. So I'm going to activate the uh, fuel pump using the scan tool. Yeah, shoot. It's not what I wanted. Custom list. Okay. And what's going to happen is the fuel pump is going to bring the pressure up to where we need it and then I'm just going to hit this button try to get all this in so I'm just going to hit the, the on button for the fuel pump should see the pressure come up and turn it off and then it come to its stabilized state or pressure which right now it looks right at 42 psi i'm going to hit the button on the 
tester. Drop down to right at 32. So it lost 10, 10 pounds of pressure. I'm going to go to the other injector. Turn the fuel pump on. Get our pressure back up. I'm going to turn the fuel pump off. Let it come to a stabilized state, which is at the same spot. About 40, just right at 42. Hit the button. Okay. What you want to see is a perfect match. You want the injectors, you want all of them to, to uh, show the same exact pressure drop. Okay, I'm going to hit the fuel pump, turn it back on. Turn it off. Hit the test button. Okay, 32. So far, so good. This will be the last injector. Turn the fuel pump back on. Turn the fuel pump off. Give it just a second. Make sure that it doesn't drop any more than that. Okay, I'm going to hit the button on the tester. So they're dropping right at 10 PSI. Now you don't want to do this a whole bunch of times because you're literally shooting raw fuel into the cylinders. Um, and let me, I don't know if you can hear this or not. Let me, I'm going to, I am going to do one more because I know that this fan running probably can't hear the injector but I'm not going to turn the, the pump on so we're down to 30 pistol but I want you to hear what the injector sounds like hopefully you heard that but you can literally hear it you know pulsing now I generally use the 50 uh, 50 pulses on this t tester and the tester that I'll link to on Amazon, I'll link to this one too. It's still available. I've had this for probably 25 years at least. Um, but they've got other testers that uh, got a little digital display, and they're you know they're they look fancier than this, but they're just like China, you know they're China testers. This is an OTC. This is a rock solid tester. But uh, anyway, that's how you. That's how you check your fuel injectors without using the scan tool, even though I use mine to uh, turn that off. I use mine to activate the fuel pump. The only reason is because on this particular car, you can't go to the run position and have the fuel pump come on. I mean, I'm assuming that's not correct. Every car I've ever worked on, when you go to the run, even before you crank it, the uh, um, fuel pump comes on for a couple seconds. When it senses uh, the engine not cranking, the fuel pump shuts off. So that's how you would normally do this without a scan tool with just using this tester and using a fuel pressure gauge. Have your gauge hooked up. Have your tester hooked up. Turn your key on. The fuel pump should come on. For a couple seconds, your pressure should come up to whatever it is. You know, it won't necessarily be the same as this car. Uh, once the fuel pump cuts off, you'll have that little bit of a of a uh, reduction in your fuel pressure, but it should stabilize. Once it's stabilized, you know what? You, we ought to be able to hear it now. We're not going to be able to. Yeah, we are. It, whenever it stabilizes, you'll actually be able to do your test you just hit your button injector pulses make sure that all your injectors whether it's a four cylinder six cylinder or eight cylinder that all of them have the same pressure drop is what you're looking looking for so i'm going to pulse this again uh and that's what it sounds like whenever you hear your injector so hopefully all that made sense um fuel pressure gauge the tester and you can check your fuel injectors yourself to uh, you know make sure that they're good and again 
let me release the pressure so I'm not injecting fuel into here. I'll show you what the difference in the pulse width is. We're going to go to one, one pulse, 500 milliseconds. You should only hear one click. Okay, let's do this again. Should hear one click when I push the button. Now I'm going to go to 50 pulses. You want to hear 50 pulses. Now I'm going to go to 100 pulses. And when you hit that, you get your little pulsing light. But that's pulsing the injector, so if you have fuel pressure, you're going to have a fuel pressure drop. So, anyway. Just wanted to show a fuel pressure test with this fuel pressure tester. Just clips to your battery to power it. And then the only thing you got to do is have a fuel pressure gauge hooked up and be able to energize the fuel pump. Whether you use a, a you know a scan tool, uh, your key, you know turning your key on and off, or rather just turning it on. Fuel pump on most cars should come on, shut off. Uh, automatically and then it's going to come to a uh, stabilized resting state and uh, that's when you're going to do your test and then after that test you're going to turn the key off back on so that the fuel pump will actuate whenever it shuts off the fuel pressure comes to a stabilized state you're going to do your test then after the f pressure drop, key off, key back on, fuel pump will kick back on when it shuts off. Um, and you'll do that however many times you need to to get through all the injectors. But again, don't don't keep doing it because you're flooding your cylinders because you're going to go to start your car. And you can hydraulically lock the engine. And some engines will actually, uh, it'll it'll ruin them. I've, I've known a... I knew a guy that did this, and he flooded the cylinder so bad that whenever he cranked it over, it, it tried to fire, and it busted the uh, rod and shot the rod out the block. So do this one time, start the car up, or at least crank it to evacuate the cylinders if you feel you need to do it again. But don't keep doing it multiple times before turning the engine over. All right, so I'm going to disconnect this. Uh, pressure gauge. In fact, I'll show you how that works. On the gauge, you just push the two red buttons, and there, there that is. And then to get this off, I'm still going to have to use the uh, the tool here. I don't know if I'll be able to do this one-handed. Okay. Push them down in there, and that line will pop right off. And then, what we're going to do here is snap the fuel line back on. And don't just snap it on, close the hood and take off. Once it's snapped on, start it up, make sure you don't get anything leaking. Uh, from that line. If you've ever seen cars on the side of the road on fire, there's a good chance they fin they got finished working on something, they didn't check for leaks, and they went to driving it off, driving off, and uh, they were spraying fuel underneath the hood. That is never a good thing. All right, so I'm going to hook these injectors back up and consider that job done and good. You guys take care.